Hello, good evening everyone. I am Taran Preet Singh Grover, Solution Architect from Daimler Trucks Asia, Japan. Delighted to be here in APAC Data 2030 Summit and present on the topic of data silos. How to handle data complexity within your organization. So let's get started. Before we get into the stuff where we discuss about how to get rid of data silos, I think it's really for important that we first understand about what data silos actually are. And I would like to explain you this with the help of an example in terms of a story. We have two finance colleagues who were supposed to create a finance report for their management. They were asked to collect data for this and when they were discussing with each other, they realized that there is no one place for them to get data from. They discussed with their colleagues and also across teams to find out the right source of the information. Some colleagues were helpful guiding them to the data. Some colleagues were completely reluctant. They were, they were, they were contributing more towards the silo mentality when sharing data with them. The colleagues that were sharing data with them was not consistent and was not meeting the criteria or the quality that they were looking for. They reached out to and they started creating a map between the data and the systems they know that could have the finance, system, uh, finance data. And the map looked like this, which is surely messy. And it's quite difficult from this map to understand where we could find the right information. There are CSVs floating around. There are Excels floating around between the people and all have different information. It's quite difficult to put together and have one financial summary report created to present to the higher management. Both the colleagues end up facing troubles and were not able to contribute towards the dashboard that they were meant to create. So this is with this we realize that the data silos do exist within the organization and it's quite challenging when the when you're mapping between the systems and the files is such complex and it's quite difficult to sort it out and this requires a lot of effort to put together all of this information. Organization aim for higher growth, for better revenue and also for building brand for themselves. And they rely upon emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning and data science to contribute to it. And these are really great tools to benefit any organization. But the, what are the core fundamentals for these emerging technologies? At the end, we come down to the same part, which is data. Data is a core part for these technologies to be utilized to its full potential, to bring fruitful results to the company's growth. But one of the reasons that it is not able to bring those results is because there are a lot of data silos within our organization. And these data silos occur due to various reasons and become an obstacle for an organization to become data driven. These challenges are for example, like we witnessed in the previous uh, discussion, as an example, the data quality. The data is scattered across the organization and it's quite difficult to benchmark if it is of good quality or not. Since it is scattered, it's quite difficult to govern this data and have an end-to-end -end transparency where the data is flowing from one place to the other. Even if it is flowing from one place to the other, the data sharing is not happening in such a fashion which is it is easier for anyone to get results out of it. There is no single point of access for the data because if there would have been a single point for access of the data, then everyone would come to one single point and utilize that shared data rather than creating their own copies of Excel files and CSVs and then circulating it around. Last but not the least, there is a there is no platform for the business users or even for the application developers to look for the right data they need. They still have to do this exploratory exercise to where find the right data. So far, we have discussed what data silos are and what causes them to occur within an organization. We also discussed that it is really essential for a company's growth that the data is not scattered across the organization and is available as a single point of access for everyone. But getting rid of these data silos 
is not an overnight job. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of collaboration with people and coming down to one synergy where we could say that there is platform which could serve all the uh, benefits that is expected by the business. So we have break down this process of getting rid of data silos into three segments, namely identifying the data silos. In this segment, we identify the data silos, find it where these exist in the organizations and try to bring them to one structure. Second is building an end to end strategy. This is working closely with several other teams as well to come up with a strategy and building an architecture that could serve data consumers with various requirements and also enabling applications to use the data. Finally, we have data integration where we get the data from the data sources to our platform and also sort out the challenges that we face with them. And in the end, providing services to the data consumers of various opportunities. Going forward, we will discuss these processes with the roles and responsibilities that we have highlighted below in this slide, which are core IT infrastructure team, data source admins, data engineers, data stewards, business, and finally, the legal and compliance. Identification of data silos is a cumbersome exercise. As I mentioned earlier, it's not an overnight job. It takes a lot of effort and collaboration among different groups and team members to come up with an information that could later help you to build your data platform. Starting these exercises with listing down the ID data sources. This exercise is carried between a member from the data team, most likely a data engineer, data source admins, and the core IT infrastructure team. They jointly discuss what kind of a database we have. Is it available on premise or on cloud? What is the IP or DNS name associated with it? What kind of a connectors are available to connect to these systems? What, what kind of a schema it has? These kind of information will be fruitful later. Coming down to the second steps, in parallel, data stewards are discussing with business, mapping the business to the core IT systems. They will interact with them, ask them how do they occasionally get hold of the data? Are they getting this data from an Excel file over emails or CSV, or they're downloading it from a front end application? This will help data stewards to map the business data to the right source system. And all of this information is really critical because data steward also looking into what are the best policies to use this data. This information is still a lot of to capture and put together. And for this, we have right tools available in the market. These tools capture the tribal knowledge of this because people come in and come out of the organization and such a valuable information should retain. These tools are like our data catalog tools, which are open source as well as available by the third party vendors. All of them offer rich features, but if you want to start quickly and want to do uh, start cataloging your ID systems and business metadata, it's you can go ahead with the open source systems and capture these information. Now we come down to our end to end strategy for building the data landscape. While working on the strategy, we have to make sure that we have one target in our mind. That is building data products. These data products are nothing but the data sets that you would be publishing onto your platform for business users to consume it. This could be called a data marketplace where business can go and request the data as per their requirements and use it, maybe for self-service, or for any application use as well. For example, like we discussed in the very first case, uh, we have finance data. A user can go on to a catalog, search for the data, and simply get access to it. But journey to create these data products start at the very bottom of this, is to have an infrastructure backing this. 
So your data architects and data engineers would work closely with the data, with the core ID infrastructure team to define this. Now your data sources could be on several places. It could be on cloud, it could be also on premises, or it could be at both. You still have to connect to these data sources such that you onboard the data onto your platform. From the network standpoint, you have to open firewalls. You have to establish connection to these data sources. And also make sure that there is no latency when you try to fetch data from these data sources. When you are fetching this data, obviously you are going to store this data somewhere. So we also have to think from the security standpoint whether there are proper encryption mechanisms placed on the data while it is in transit or it is on rest. Since you're providing this data to the business or the end user for the use for any, any application or cell service, it is important that we have proper backup and disaster recovery options available because you could be serving with these data products to critical applications which might decide your company's growth. As a second step, data engineers would work closely with the, uh, with the data source admins to identify what kind of a connectors would be the best to consume the data to consume the data from the data sources. Now, these data sources could provide you the data in form of various options. They could provide you the data from flat files. So you just have to consume it as is into your platform. Or there could be special connectors to connect it. For example, JDBC, ODBC, REST API, and so on. Once that is done, you are slowly trying to onboard your onboard these data from your on-premise cloud to your platform. Now we need to define now we need to define the standards to this data. But data engineer alone will not do that. This will be done closely by data stewards and business together. They would define the SLAs for these data products. They would define the quality whether the data that you're getting is of good quality or in a fashion or, or can it be consumable or not what is the frequency do these data get refreshed so these are the parameters that data stewards and business would be working on and tagging your data products with it it's important to consider the role of legal in compliance here they would be helping you out in establishing the data sharing agreements because we have to enable the end-to-end -end transparencies how the data is coming from the source and flowing to which ends so these agreements would help you understand the flow of your data within your organization also depending upon uh, your where you are storing data local governing laws are also important for example in europe you have gdpr laws in japan we have jama laws which we have to consider while storing this data and how to deal with the personal information whether we have to mask this information or anonymize it so all of this information would be done closely with the legal and compliance side in the end we we have to we have built the data products now it's more about serving it when we have to serve these data products these could be used by various applications like as you can see these could be data driven apps artificial for artificial intelligence analytics marketing ops and so on but you can have different requirements for it these are hybrid workloads so we have to make sure our platform is in good shape to support these hybrid workloads these could be transactional systems that wants to consume the data or this could be analytical ones which just simply wants to consume the data on monthly or on yearly basis so your platform should be in a good shape to provide that. Now we have covered our end-to-end -end strategy. Now we'll look forward what are the possible challenges we face when we start actually implementing these on the integration level from the technical standpoint. As part of your technical integration, it is really, really important that you consider all the performance scenarios. I would not be able to cover all these performance scenarios, but I would cover the one which is somewhat ignored, which is the performance considerations. Within our organizations, we have variety of data sources. 
but there are data sources which are critical to business. And if they goes down, there could be a problem. Your core business would not be able to function. In these cases, data source admins do not allow direct connection to their systems. Instead, they provide you the data so that you can consume it and publish it as a product. But there is a problem. They still do the heavy lifting in doing the aggregation, as you can see in the image. They are doing complex joint between table 1, table 2, table 3, and table 4, and then dumping the data for application 1 and application 2 to consume. This should be avoided. You should sit together with your data source admins and also the business owners for that particular data source and explain them how you would be querying this data source. Establish proper agreements with them and tell them what kind of a queries you would be performing on top of it. It's always good not to perform heavy queries on that. Otherwise, it won't make the difference being the data source itself doing the heavy lifting or you do it by your queries. Other problem that we face during the integration is choosing the right tool. We, I have often been observed that there is a wrong tool or wrong database chosen for the wrong purpose. We should not never use OLTP database for OLAP and OLAP for OLTP purposes. Now there are a lot of options available out in the market that you could uh, choose from and choosing the technology is much easier these days because you have a lot of options in terms of open source and proprietary. This gives you option. Uh, this gives you an opportunity to be cost effective in some way. Initially, you can go with open source and try to evaluate the best outcomes it, it can give you. It may not give you all the features you want, but you can decide at least. Once the decision has been made, you can go for proprietary data sources and Understand your ETL practices or data fetching practices, choosing the right technology there. My favorite one here is data virtualization, which gives great benefits, which I'll also briefly discuss in one of the slides later. Enabling data service. Now you have onboarded the data. Now it's time to provide services to the end data consumer. Now you would be offering these services of in various ways. You have to make sure that you are able to serve all the hybrid requirements. You should be able to provide the data in the way the business or the data consumers request. Let's say you are providing a huge volume of data to a business user or to an application. So your backend infrastructure should be supportive enough to provide the data in an efficient manner. One of the other practices while enabling the data as a service, you should take care of not replicating the data. It is more about sharing the data. Create one data as a data product and share it among different group of business groups or different applications. And publish only what is required. We often see we, we pull more data which is not even required. If it is not required, then don't pull it. You have the visibility to the data sources. Whenever required, you can pull the data again and then provide it. Now it's time to summarize what we have discussed so far. So on the top, you would notice we have various departments. For example, sales, finance, customer services, and procurement. They actively interact with data stewards, which are assigned for, their, for them. These data stewards are cross-functional team members, which are, but are part of data team, work closely with them and get the business requirements and map those requirements to the IT systems we have within our organization. They also discuss with the data engineers and provide them the details and guide them to pull the right information. Data engineers, on the other hand, discuss with the data source admins and ask for the data. Data source admins help them to connect the system and provide them right joins and logic to pull the required data. They, they also validate the data with regard to the data quality checks and so on. 
On the other hand, data engineers also interacts with the core IT infrastructure team. Core IT infrastructure team helps them to connect the data sources that exist in the organization to their platform and guide them in terms of network securities and so on. And this happens again and again. This is a continuous exercise that is repeated. Now you would be wondering, this is still an intensive exercise to do for a use case and to remove data silos within organization. But actually, this could be done in two ways. One is the big bang approach. The other one is the phased approach. I personally prefer phased approach. In this approach, you only onboard that data, which is required for a use case at a time. You don't go on the big bang approach and connect every data sources, try, try to create uh, data products for your organization. This is a long term project and should be a long term target, I would say. But to start small as, and as a continuous exercise, you should go with the use case based approach. This will save you time and still you would be able to create the data products. For example, let's say there is a use case where sales and finance together wants to utilize data. Right. And then you create data product for them. When you create data product, you later realize the same data product can be used for a future use case. In this case, you don't have to put more effort. Instead, you can share the same data product with the new use case. So this will help you save time. And this, like I mentioned again and again, has to be governed. This is where you have to again check with regard to legal and compliance for all the data sharing agreements, data classification and data protection laws. Now we would cover a bit of a technical area in terms of how the, your data landscape picture would look like. So now it's the time to look at the final picture. We have strategized everything from initialization to the integration. So as you can see on the leftmost side, we have all our data sources which are on variety of platforms. These, some of them could be on premise, some of them could be on cloud, and there are other sources, for example, uh, APIs or from social media channels per se. Then we have a data virtualization layer, which is the integrating layer and also an abstracting layer. When it comes to integration, this layer connects to every other data source that we have within the organization and allow us to create the data products within this layer. This products can be utilized by another application which they want, which wants to use the data. These could be again OLTP applications having their own databases. Then this could be also data lake where we have also shown what are the open source technologies that you could leverage to build the data lake within your organization. Not limited to this, you can also have data warehouses then we have again a data virtualization layer. You would, be you, would be, you would be wondering why do we have another data virtualization layer in between. This is, not a, an, a, this is not a separate data virtualization layer, but the same layer which is also covering the data that sits in your lake and warehouses and also the other application. Note, this data virtualization is not meant to be used within the applications. I mean the front end and the back end of the application. They should be only work as a fabric over the top of your all the databases for enabling seamless access to it. Since the data would be placed here as a product, business users can directly consume it into their applications, enabling data as a service. They can access their data in terms of data science notebooks, machine learning notebooks, business dashboards. Even other applications can also use it in their web apps or for microservices. Nevertheless, this is also end to end governed. We should we always have the metadata and proper end to end transparency where the data is. Here, the data is not provided as a dump to an, a particular individual user. Rather, he or she comes to this platform and takes the benefit of it. With this, I would like to end my presentation here and I hope you have enjoyed it to your best level. I also look forward to interact with you on face-to-face -face basis, so please feel free to reach out to me. 
below are my contact details and also my company profile. Wish you a very good evening. Thank you.